Flat Earth Clues Part 1, The Empty Theater. This is part of a series of clues that can help you get your head around both the design of the flat earth system we live in and who has been involved in the deception to hide it from you. The clue you have to look at is built upon another conspiracy that has been around for decades, namely the space program. Most of those watching this are aware of the varying theories revolving around NASA the Apollo program, the space shuttle, the International Space Station, and so on. The clue itself isn't based on one of these highly debated topics, but the lack of one. More specifically, motion pictures based on actual events. This, like others in the series, is something you can check out for yourself. Everything you need to reference this is online. To begin, think of all the movies involving space travel that you've seen in your lifetime. You'll start with the obvious. Star Wars, Star Trek, Alien, just to name a few. In fact, if you go through your own personal list, you could probably come up with over 100 different off-world movies without breaking much of a sweat. That part is easy. For the second group, try to come up with space movies that aren't fantasy-based. You'll get a list that has Red Planet, Gravity, Mission to Mars, 2001, things like that. These films will usually take on a not-so-distant future theme and where we could be down the road. And it's still a pretty good-sized list. These first two groups of films are encouraged by the authority because they reinforce the globe model through assumption. The entertainment system demands that the globe view and solar system concept is a given. Therefore, the actual world view must also be true. Or to put it another way, if you're using your suspension of disbelief as you watch a movie like, say, Gravity, then subconsciously you're reinforcing the movie right on top of the real world. The more of these movies you watch and enjoy, the more the lines blur between what you want to believe and what you actually know. Watch enough movies about Mars, and you will be less astonished when NASA announces an actual mission to Mars. Same with the moon, other solar systems, and so on. Releasing the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey in 1968, right before the actual moon missions, was no accident. It took the greatest director of all time five years to make, and several people who saw the theater screenings claimed that many military groups were listed in the credits, only to be removed years later. But 2001 is just a side note of this clue. For those who really want to dig into Stanley Kubrick's hidden vision, I highly recommend the documentary Room 237. A link to it is below as well. Now you are aware of the first two groups of space films. There are those that contain generous amounts of fantasy, and those who try to paint our near future. These two groups are easy to find. The third group is a challenge, and again, that's where things get interesting. The moon missions concluded in 1972, and even though it's still considered the greatest achievement by mankind, no fact-based movies were made regarding it until The Right Stuff was released in 1983. Now you might say that it had only been 11 years, and maybe it was tough to get the rights, and so on, but that's not what made the film interesting. The movie ran extremely long for 1983, coming in at 3 hours and 12 minutes. It was an exhaustive look at the astronaut selection process, the competition, and the training facility itself. But when the credits rolled three hours later, chronologically, they had only gotten to the low Earth orbit missions. Just for fun, Google the Right Stuff movie and see how many spacecraft you can find. It won four Academy Awards and did a great job at the box office, but the Apollo missions were never touched. The only other major motion picture that involved the actual moon program was Apollo 13 in 1995, a full 12 years later. Apollo 13 only covered a single moon orbit and no landing or close-up reference to the previous missions below them. And after 1995, that was it. Nothing. Hollywood is known for leaving no stone unturned with reboots and sequels to nearly everything. Yet in almost 60 years, 
there has never been a single moon mission movie based on actual events. Hundreds of science fiction films reference in it. Everything from Superman to the Transformers. But literally nothing that covers the moon's surface. Six complete moon missions involving multiple vehicles, moon buggies, playing golf, and no one wants to touch it. Now to be fair, there was a TV miniseries in 1998 covering the subject. It was produced by Tom Hanks, who got involved after starring in Apollo 13. There has been no professional production of any kind since then. Again, just for fun, Google from Earth to the Moon TV series and see what you find. The why is easy, and the clue revealed. If Hollywood makes a movie about the moon landings, and it's indistinguishable from the real thing, then how do you know which is real? It raises some subtle questions involving stage technique and how long they've been in place. If Hollywood could fake it now, then when did they first have the ability? There is one other movie which stands out, and I mention it because I can't believe it ever got made, is Capricorn 1. The film's plot involved the faking of a Mars mission and how it could be accomplished. In short, it's part of the Conspiracy World Bible. I highly recommend it, and the link is below. To summarize, all space movies are encouraged by the authority, except for the ones that are based on actual accounts. Those are not allowed. The moon program has been buried in entertainment because the moon cannot be reached. It's either outside the barrier or just a highly rendered image, like any planet you see when entering a video game. The world is flat, and this is just one clue. So do some of your own research and ask questions. Please feel free to email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net or 303-494-6631.